Hello, happy Monday. You guys, I've been getting so many questions and DMs about easy eyeshadow, how to apply, what brushes to use. So we're gonna do a whole video on it today. And if you are just joining, say hi. If you have any questions about eyeshadow during this entire video, ask away, because that's what this is gonna be for. If you are new here, my name is Lauren. I'm 43 years old. I love making makeup simple and easy because a lot of us, as our skin changes, we stop wearing makeup because it's not the same as it used to be, right? So we're gonna do really easy eyeshadow today. I'm going to make it simple, I promise. Hello, hello to you. Okay, so if you have any questions during this live, you can ask and anything you, you know, that you are worried about with your eyeshadow, what you're struggling with, this is gonna be geared towards you. So make sure when I post this that you save it and come back to it and we'll, it'll be something you can use when you are doing your own makeup at home, okay? Hi, Lauren. Okay, what eyeshadow makes your eye look more lifted and what does the opposite? We're gonna talk about that today, good question. Okay, so I'm gonna be using All Saint products today. That is the makeup that I wear, I get asked that a lot. I do free color matches, so if you are interested in cream-based makeup, the eyeshadow I'm using though will be powder. You can comment match when I post this video, okay? And we'll get you all set up. So, let's get started. We're doing a fall look today. I'm usually a very neutral girly, but we're gonna do some color today, because a lot of you have been like, could you please do color? So yes, I'm gonna do color. So here's what we're gonna do. The first thing I wanna talk about is brushes. So as we age, one of the biggest things that happen First of all, I have deep set eyes, so I wanna tell you that. When you're, we're talking eyeshadow for eyes, you need to look at your eyes. So when you look at mine, I have very deep set eyes, which means my crease is set farther back in my head. It looks like my eyes are farther back. So there's tips and tricks for that. Now, a lot of what happens when we age is this part of our kind of forehead, our hood, starts getting heavy, right? Like this right here. And you might not have the lid space that I have. So that's what I'm gonna teach you today, placement, how to help with that. If you don't have a lid, I have a lid. But if you don't have one, I'm gonna show you tips and tricks for that. Um, how do you make your liner with powder eyeshadow last? We're gonna talk about that. I'm actually gonna show you how to do a powder liner today and make it last, okay? So we will do that, especially if you have oily skin. Um, I love these questions because I was already kind of planning to talk on them, so it's perfect. Um, but when you're talking about eye shape, I want you to look at your eyes, okay? Because I can show you all the tips and tricks, but if you have a different issue with your eyes, it may be that you're gonna apply things just a little bit differently. So while I do this live today, I'm going to just be mentioning lots of different eye shapes, um, and I'm gonna talk about how to make them open, I'm gonna talk about deep set, hooded, more mature eyes, this area getting a little bit heavier, what to do about that, what not to put there, that's what we're gonna be doing today, okay? So let's just get started. So let's talk about brushes first. Normally what I see people doing, and this is the first thing that's gonna make your eyeshadow not apply well, is using a big fluffy brush. So you can see, this is a typical eyeshadow brush, okay? Most of us don't even think twice, we just are like, oh, that looks like a good eyeshadow brush, I'm gonna grab it. The problem with this is that it is really large. So if you don't have a lid space, or this part of your eye, the hood is getting really heavy, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this big brush, you're gonna try to fit it right into that area you're trying to get placed the right way, and it's not gonna work for you. It's gonna skip on the eyelid, especially if you have texture on the eyelid. So if you're using a big brush like this and you're noticing like, hey, my eyeshadow's skipping, I can't place it exactly how I want, I don't feel like I have control, this is your first problem, using too big of a brush. So I love the eyeshadow brush from Saint, but it's also pretty big. So you can see like these are pretty large. So if you have smaller eyes or very hooded eyes, this isn't a brush you wanna reach for. Instead, you wanna reach for a brush that is a little smaller. I think I brought another example. Maybe I didn't. Ugh, did I? Yes, I did. Okay, see how small these are? Let me just show you again. In comparison, they're, they're still fluffy, they're just smaller. So if I was to take this brush, I'm gonna be able to fit it right into that area. See the difference there of how I can fit that in versus taking a big brush like this and I'm like, I've lost control. So using a smaller brush, if you have more mature eyes, if you have a heavier hood, if you have hooded eyes, this is what you wanna look for. This is the BK Beauty 211, and I will post that. They have a hooded eye set that I absolutely love. Also for the lid, using something that's a little bit smaller and flatter, like something like this, where you can really get onto that lid, 
gives you control, but don't be afraid to use your fingers, okay? Your fingers can also be a tool when you're doing your eyeshadow. So we're gonna be using a smaller brush today. That's the first thing. And then the next second thing I see people not doing, and they're worried because their eyeshadow's not staying on, is you're not priming your eyelids. Now, a lot of people I see priming it with concealer, which is great. We already have that in our arsenal, right? But the problem with concealer, and I was gonna do a do as and don'ts, but I'm actually not, I'm just gonna show you how to do it correctly. The problem with concealer is if you have any bit of texture on the eyes, it can lay very heavy on the eyelids. It can also move the product around, um, unless you're setting it with like a translucent powder. I just find concealer to look really heavy, really emphasize texture and fine lines on the eyes, which I know a lot of us are not going for that look. So what I like to do is use an eye primer, okay? There are so many eye primers. Milani has a good cheap one. This is the Urban Decay. I just grabbed this one, Rare Beauty. You'll see me use that one a lot. Um, there's a lot of great ones on the market, but this is a thinner. See how that's a lot thinner than putting concealer on? It's gonna be a lot thinner on the eye, but what a primer does is it evens out the eyelid. I bet you if you were to look at your eyelid, and I'm gonna prime from the lid to the brow bone. If you were to look at your eyelid, I bet you that you have a lot of discoloration on the eyes. And if you're not an eyeshadow girly, this is so easy to change the look of your eye. So let's say you don't wear eyeshadow. If you're not putting anything on your eye, you have a lot of discoloration. Just grab an eye primer that has a little tint to it, like this one even, and you're just gonna put it right on your eye and it will even everything out and it just makes it look a lot more smooth. Yes, eye primer is a game changer, okay? I promise you. A lot of people will say, oh, you don't need that. I promise you, I have played around with my mature skin. I played around with other people's mature skin and it will slip and slide or you'll get cakiness, creasing, and I feel like with an eyeshadow primer, I just don't get that. So. You don't have to go buy a really expensive one, but it is a game changer if you want your eye shadow to stay on for long periods of time, which that's me. I don't wanna fix my makeup, right? Who has time for that? We're all really busy, right? So once you prime your eyes from the lid to the brow bone, also if you have hooded eyes, don't be afraid to lift up. It's okay, you're not pulling your eyes. Doing this motion of just pulling the hood up is not going to give you fine lines and wrinkles, okay? You're gonna be fine. <laughs> so. Um, you, I would not use a primer as a concealer. No, it's just a different job. Um, it's some, some eyeshadow, it depends on the one you're using, can be tacky too. So I would not use it as a concealer. No, I would just use your eye primer only on the eyes. It just works really well that way. Um, okay. So once you've got your eyes primed, now if you have oily lids, I want you to still set with a translucent powder. Okay. So you're gonna set your eyes with a translucent powder if you have oily eyelids. Really quick, cream eyeshadow. I wasn't planning to talk about this. I like cream eyeshadow. I like the cream eyeshadow sticks. They're great, but you have to set them. They will legit, they'll come off your eyes, okay? So they will slip and slide, especially if you have oily lids. So you wanna make sure you're setting your products correctly. So especially with cream eyeshadow, you just wanna go over with a translucent powder at the end, or even like if you're using, let's say, a cream blue, I'm sorry, cream brown um, eyeshadow, go on top with just a similar, shade in powder. Um, I have blue veins on my eyelids. Well, they have a lot of eye primers that actually are like peach tone, so you could look for one like that, and that would also help you get that discoloration gone. Um, so, that's a good one too. Okay, so, we've got the brush, we've got the primer, now we're gonna talk placement, okay? So I'm actually gonna do, where's my colors? Where are my colors? These are my colors, okay? So these are from Saint. These are going to be the four colors we're gonna use. They're very fall, they're very bright for what I ever do, but you guys asked for it, so we're doing it. Okay, so I've got a shimmer that's called Drift. I've got Tangerine, that's a matte. I've got, yes, Sigma has one, yes. Um, Moscow, which is a, um, it's like a shimmer as well. It's kind of like a pinky rust shimmer. And then I've got Pomegranate, which is kind of like a reddish, color, but it's matte. So first thing you can notice, right, is I have two matte shades and I have two shimmer shades. 
You can use shimmer as you age. A lot of people say don't use shimmer. You can, it's all about placement. So I'm gonna show you where you can place your shimmer if you have more textured lids. But we're gonna start with these four colors. We're gonna start with a medium matte color. So no matter what four colors you use, you can use any palette you want at home. You can use anything, okay? But you wanna have these kind of this kind of rule of thumb. So two mattes, two shimmers, or less. So if you're doing a two color eyelid, I look just at one matte and one shimmer, okay? Now, you wanna get the medium color. So if you look at my shade range, right, it kinda goes light, mediums, and then a dark. So whatever four colors, two colors you're using, it's kinda that same rule of thumb. We're gonna start with a medium shade, okay? So we're gonna build up the color. We don't wanna go straight on, especially if you have smaller eyes or if you have really deep set eyes, going into a crease with a dark color, it's just gonna pull your eyes back if you have deep set eyes. It's gonna make them look very small. So what we're trying to do first is open up the eye. So I am going to use the 211 brush that I showed you in the beginning. I'm gonna dip into this color right here. This is tangerine. And when I dip in, I'm not going straight onto my eye. I'm actually going to just tap. Okay, so one, that's gonna take off all the product. I'm not gonna go straight on with a ton of product because you can always build up product. Same way with our face, our foundation, and things like that. We don't wanna just go straight onto the face. So always like tapping it off. Okay, next thing we're gonna do. We're gonna look straight ahead. First thing people wanna do is close their eyes. If you have hooded eyes at all or no lid space, closing your eyes, you're not going to be able to see the color when you open your eyes. So if you're having that problem, keep your eyes open. If you have a mirror in front of you, even like just putting that mirror straight in front of you and then what you're gonna do is take your brush and where the arch of your brow is, if you can find it, a lot of us have lost the arch of the brow, but kind of in that similar area, you're gonna take your brush looking straight ahead. Here's my crease right here. I don't wanna go into that crease. Even with deep set eyes, I don't. It pulls my eye back. I wanna go right above it. And I just wanna mark that out like that, okay? First thing too, I'm holding my brush really low. I don't wanna grab it here. If I grab it here, it's gonna be like so much product. I'm not gonna have control. I'm gonna have a lighter hand, which if you have a hard time and you're applying too much eyeshadow, a lighter hand is where we wanna go with that. So I'm gonna dip back in and I'm gonna start building that color, okay? So when I'm putting that above that natural crease, I'm looking forward, majority of my product is on this outer corner and I'm kind of sweeping it up to the tail of the brow, okay? Once I've got that placed, then I'm just gonna kind of come back and forth and making small circles. I don't love this windshield wiper motion. I like small circles. It's gonna blend out your product so much better on the eye. So I'm just kind of coming above the crease. I'm making a new crease is all I'm doing, okay? So I'm just gonna come above that natural crease and I'm bringing it towards the tail of the brow, and then I'm gonna work it to the inner corner. Once you have it placed, you can close your eyes because you have that placement of where you want it. So already you can see how the eye is starting to open, right? Because we just have, we're giving the illusion of that eye being bigger by making a new crease, okay? So I'm just gonna do it on the other side really quick. Tap off the brush. Oh, you are so nice, thank you. I always like to start right under that, where that arch is, because that's where the majority of my product I want it to be. And then I'm just gonna map that out. And then once I've got that mapped out, slowly keep adding that product. And I'm just going to do some slight circles, bring it out towards the tail. The other thing you can do too, is if you feel like you've applied too much product, you can go in with even a bigger fluffy brush and just go right on top. If you're having a hard time blending, just use a clean, bigger brush to really blend and buff out that area. Okay, so that's just another little tip and trick. I told you, you're gonna wanna save this because I'm giving you lots of tips and tricks on this one. Okay. So once you've got that placed, you're gonna work it however you want, you know, however you want that color to be. I don't want that color to be super strong. I just want this color to be kind of like that matte, that. I mean, honestly, like that just made my eyes like more awake, right? 
Also, when you're applying this medium matte shade, you wanna make sure that you just have that really nicely blended out because it's gonna be your transition shade. You're gonna go into that color again to keep building up your eye look. So the first color you put on that medium matte shade is your transition shade. And you're gonna be using that a couple of times to really get your blend. So if you're having a hard time blending your eyeshadow, that is probably a step you're not doing, going back into that first shade and blending. And we'll do that, okay. So now we've got our medium shade on. Now we're gonna go to this darker shade right here. Okay, this is my darkest shade. Now, when you place your darkest shade, you can use a brush like this still. You could even use a brush like this. That's more of a pencil brush. I'm gonna do that just to show you. Um, I'm just gonna wipe some of my eyeshadow off. It's like brush cleaning day, really bad today. Okay, so I'm gonna tap in to pomegranate, which is right here. And now that's a very dense brush, right? So look how much product that packed on. So I'm gonna go onto my hand and I'm gonna just take some of that off. Because if I go straight on with that pomegranate, my eyeshadow is gonna have, I'm gonna have so much on my eye and I don't wanna do that. Now, one thing that we wanna do, we wanna put that darker color on the outer corner of the eye, but we don't wanna make it so dark that it closes the eye. We actually wanna use the dark color to lift and give the illusion that our eye is longer and bigger. So what you're gonna do, is you're gonna start same thing right here, right above where that um, arch is, okay? See where I put that right there? And then a lot of us have heard of a triangle. You could do that. I like to just kind of come in, in like a V, where I place it just like that, okay? It looks scary, it's gonna get, fun. It's gonna get better. Go back in with that first brush, go back into your tangerine just a little bit, and you're going to blend that color out. And notice I'm flicking. Okay, I'm flicking up towards the tail of the brow. And, oh yeah, good, I'm glad that's helpful. Yeah, yeah, it's, I think eyeshadow, um, a lot of us get really intimidated because we put too much on and then we can't take it off. And so I think just like little tips like that help. Now, one thing too is I'm flicking up towards the brow. See, it's still holding it down low. And then I'm bringing it inwards. But most of my product is staying on that outer corner of the eye. That's what's gonna lift and elongate the eye. Okay? Can we see how we're just adding depth, we're elongating. And we will clean it up, so don't get nervous if your hand kind of pulls down or makes it look droopy. It's okay, because you're gonna clean it up. Um, you can go back onto your hand if you wanna add a little bit more. That way you're not wasting your eyeshadow. But what you're doing is you're going back to the orange that I started with, my transition color, and I'm just working it into where I just placed the pomegranate. And that's gonna make it just look a lot more blended out. Now, if you're still having a hard time blending it out, you can go in with that bigger fluffy brush that has nothing on it, and small circles, just kind of work that up towards the tail of the brow. See how that's just, it's just pulling it up, but it's not crazy, okay? Same thing, let's do it on the other side again, just so you can see. Tap out the excess right here. And I think, okay, so don't worry about applying the eyeshadow symmetrically, okay? Because what you're gonna do, I'm gonna show you, is we're gonna clean this up when I'm all done. And then you'll be fine. You'll be totally fine because you can clean it up and make it look symmetrical. And honestly, when it comes down to it, I'm not gonna lie, my eyes are not the best anymore. I can't see as well as I used to. But no one's staring. No one's like judging you for your eyeshadow, okay? I promise. And as long as you've got the placement and we can clean it up after, it's gonna be fine. I think we're our own worst critics, honestly, when it comes to makeup. And so a lot of us are like, we just feel like we suck at it, right? Because we're hard on ourselves. But majority of people are looking at you and they're like, that's a really, she looks beautiful. Like, think about it. Think of the things you think of women, right? When you're walking around and you look at someone and you see their makeup and you're like, that, she looks really beautiful. That's what people are really thinking, I promise. They're not, they're not judging you. I think we judge ourselves. Okay, that was my, that was my Monday. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just blending it out. So I'm putting that orange color back on. I've already got it placed, so now I'm gonna close my eye a little bit. I'm not going any farther than right here with that dark color, okay? We don't wanna bring our eye, we don't wanna bring that in. If you bring that in too far, it's gonna make it look really dark. It's gonna close off your eye. So if you have one eye that's bigger than the other, that's the other thing too. You can, with this placement, you can kind of play with it. So 
The more you play with your makeup, the more you look at yourself, the more you're gonna figure out like what you like and what you don't like. But if we don't start playing, we won't figure it out, right? We won't figure out what we, what we like and what we don't like. So I have one eye that's bigger than the other two sometimes. Like if I put my makeup on a little bit different, I can tell, but most people can't tell, so. Okay, so there are the two colors. Now we're gonna fill, fill in the lid, okay? I like to use my fingers with shimmer. I think it's a lot more manageable, a lot more controlled. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this darker shade right here and I'm gonna put it on my finger. I'm then going to put a little setting spray on it because the thing about shimmer too, hello from Greece. The thing about shimmer too is using a micro shimmer. So can you see how small that is? I don't have big, textury pieces so if i put this on my lid it's not going to bring out texture because the shimmer is just very micro shimmered so look for that in your eyeshadow and then we're going to spray this and what that's going to do is it's going to apply a lot smoother on the lid so i'm just applying it like this plus it's not going to move on you okay i'm just applying that to about i don't know i'd say about three quarters of the way in it's a really pretty, I love this shadow. It's very intimidating for a lot of people, but it's pretty, okay? So just, and I just kind of press. So if you have more texture on your lids, just press that eyeshadow on, okay? Um, I am using Charity, I am using Drift, Tangerine, Moscow, and Pomegranate, and these are all from Saint. So I will, when I post this, I promise I will put those on there. Okay, so now I've got my shimmer on, and I'm just gonna kind of press. And because I have that setting spray, what that's doing is it's going to one, not move. I have the primer on, I have a setting spray, but two, it's just applying it a little bit more smooth onto the lid. Now I'm gonna go back with my transition shade one more time. I'm gonna use a bigger brush because now I already have my placement. So I'm not worried about placement at this point. Tap that off, <laughs> texture. <laughs> we have it, right? That's what happens. Okay, and I'm just gonna go on to the eye, and I'm even going on to the shimmer with that orange first color I used, which was tangerine, okay? The reason I'm doing that is it's just gonna blend it all together and make it look like it's not three different colors. Okay, easy. Now we want to pop the inner corner, so I'm gonna use this color Drift. You can tell I use it all the time. It's super pretty, it's also a shimmer. Looks like this. I'm actually going to just kind of rub that on both of my fingers because I don't want that much on. And I'm going to start pressing that on the inner corner. Okay, I'm gonna put a little bit more. I like using my fingers, it works really well. I'm also gonna show you the difference. So that's without spraying it. It's a little easier, or a little harder to put on in my opinion. I'm gonna spray this finger, my setting spray. And then I'm gonna lock that on like that. Hi, Rachel. Thank you. Okay. So all that's doing is just opening up the inner corner of the eye. Easy. Now you can take even a little bit that you have. Actually, we're gonna use a brush for that. Okay, ignore what I just said. Sometimes I change my mind. <laughs> okay, so there is that. Those are the four colors, okay? Haven't cleaned anything up yet, but what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to take this pencil brush that I already had, and it already has this darker color on it, so I'm just gonna take whatever's left on that and just kinda of go under the eye with that darker color, okay? So I'm not adding more product to the brush, I'm just using what's already on the brush, so it's not crazy. I don't wanna put a ton of color under there because I'm gonna show you how to line with a um, eyeshadow liner, okay? All right, now we're gonna clean it up really quick and then I'm gonna show you how to line really fast because I'm running out of time. I have a meeting in 10 minutes, so I've gotta hurry. All right, so let's use, yeah, let's use this brush. This is, with Saint Cream Eyeshadows like Tangled work well for oily skin, even setting with translucent setting powder. Yes, I love Tangled, but definitely have a powder that you set with or it will slip and slide, so. That's the hard thing. That's the hard thing with creams and, and oily lids is if you're not setting it, you won't like how it kind of turns out. So, all right, so I'm gonna use the side of the brush. This is the multi brush. You can use it for your lips. You can use it for 
this, it works. And I'm gonna go back into my Saint palette. This is my normal palette. I'm gonna use my concealer shade. You can use, if you're using a normal concealer, you can do that too. I'm just gonna take a little off. And I am going to lighten right here. Right about from the arch to the tail of the brow. And we're gonna clean all that up. Okay, same thing on the other side in a minute, but I'm also gonna go from the outer corner of the eye and just kind of make, see how I just kind of lightened that? And then I'm just going to blend this out. And the reason I'm gonna do that now is that's gonna really like soften the look of my eyeshadow and it's gonna make it look more elongated. See how that just cleaned it up? It doesn't look so crazy or bright, but it looks more kind of controlled. So same thing here. Just brightening that tail of the brow, which is gonna make your eye look bigger. And then we're coming from the edge of the eye up to the temple with your concealer and that's gonna just clean everything up. I hope this is helping. <laughs> um, my same foundation and concealer is a little hard. Is there something I need to get it soft and pliable? If it's old, it will get hard and it's kind of hard to fix, but if it is in a colder area, it can also get hard. So take your hair dryer for about 20 seconds, low setting, and just hold it on there and it will literally just melt it. Creams can be melted, you guys. So if you are using Saint and you get to the end of your tin, Go put it like just take your hair dryer and it will melt it and you're back to having a lot of I should or a lot of your cream left. Oh good, I'm so glad it's helping. How do I save this? When I post it, you can save it. There's a little um, arrow and you can just save it there, um, and then you can come back to it. So okay, I love this look, but I also like liners. So we're gonna add a little depth to it. Okay. A lot of us as we age have a really hard time seeing. <laughs> so if you are using something like this, okay, if you want to use a liner. Use something small, very small. I have seven minutes. I'm gonna do really fast with this, okay? We can always do another live another time. Um, use something small, it'll give you more control. But if you still are having a hard time seeing and you just stink at eyeliner, you feel like you're horrible at it, but you don't, it doesn't need to look perfect when you do this method, so that's why I like it, okay? So I'm using this tiny, tiny brush. See this one? This is the BK208 brush. I love this one so much because it's just tiny. And I'm gonna go in with, we're gonna use, do I wanna use Philly? Yeah, I wanna use Philly. Okay, so this is a dark brown eyeliner, okay? Kind of matches my eyebrows. And I'm going to just tap on the color and then I'm gonna take my setting spray and I'm gonna spray the brush. This is gonna keep your eyeliner on, okay? Now, you are going to take this and you're going to stamp your eye, liner on. So what I like to do is think of it as like an extra eyelash versus a winged liner that you're trying to make perfect. So if you have a hard time with eye eyeliner, this can be for you. So I go to the last lash that I have and then I'm just going to stamp. So I'm trying to show you. I'm just going to stamp and I'm stamping it up towards the tail of the brow. You can make this line as long as you want or as short as you want. For me, this is probably really natural because it's not too long, but you can see between the two, I added just a tiny bit of depth by just stamping. So easy, okay? But now we're gonna make it look even more natural and more like you're trying to line. And I'm gonna put a little bit more on my brush. I'm still gonna spray it again and I have it on my hand, I use my hand a lot. And then I'm gonna come and stamp right on the edge of the eye and I only bring it to the edge of my eyeball, like my iris of my eye, okay? So it's not gonna close off the whole eye, I want it to stay elongated and open. Then I'm just gonna close my eye because I already have that extra eyelash and I'm just gonna darken at the root of the lash. Easy, right? If you wanted to smudge it out, you could go back in with that same brush as we had before and make it just a little bit more spongy. If you're like, I'm not sure I got it right. So you can add depth that way. And then you can take your mascara if you wanna even add more elongation and just put it right on the outer, whoops, I missed a little bit. You can add right on the outer lash. Like that. See so yeah, how that just added some depth, but it's not scary, it's not hard to do, super, super easy. So let me, oops, someone's at my door. Now I'm gonna go to this one really quick, 
And I'm going to stamp on the outer corner of the eye, just like an extra eyelash. This one's a little more hooded, so hopefully you can see. If you have a hood right here, I'm going under the hood, so I'm not messing with that. And then I'm just going to keep stamping. I like to come kind of to like where it, my natural crease is. And then whatever's left on my brush, I'm just coming right to there. Now my eye is closed. Whoops, I can't see what I'm doing. And I'm just gonna kind of run it on the lashes. I don't go very far, you can go as far as you want. Okay, and if you mess up, take your smudge brush again and just kind of just smudge it. You don't have to be perfect. If you have very hooded eyes, this will not work for you. I would actually tight line. I know, you guys get mad when I say that, but it works a lot better. If you don't have a lot of lid space, tight lining is my favorite. You don't have to go into the waterline. You can go right on the lash line, but it does work really well because you're fighting the lid space. I mean, you could try to do the wing, but if you have like, if you have more fine lines and wrinkles here, if you have texture, if you have a really uh, small lid space, that this is a harder look to do. So that's why I like kind of like taking, you could still take the same brush. You could do exactly what I did and just kind of rub it up along the lashes like this. See, I'm just kind of like shaking it in between the lashes. You can do that too. So it's just like this. And you'll still get some depth. So if you're trying to get depth, that's a great thing. Okay, I've gotta go. I have a call. I love you guys. I hope this was helpful. I will post it, save it. If you want a color match, comment match when I post it. And if you have any questions, drop them in the comment section um, on my page. Make sure you're following me and save this so you can come back. Um, okay, happy Monday. Bye guys.